Hello everyone and welcome back to Coloring with Haley. This is continuing my complete coloring book collection tour and this video is going to be all of my color by number books. This one will probably go a little faster than my other videos because there's not much to say about- that's thunder by the way if you can hear that on camera. There's not much to say about the pages that I've colored. Um, I color all of my color by number pages with permanent markers, so Sharpies or Bix, and I don't add any glitter or paint or anything. They're just sort of, they are what they are. You know what I mean? I don't pick the colors and things like that. So the first one here is Mystery Mosaics book two, which to me is a book that I have completed because I don't like to do the large, like double page images, just the single page, and I've done all the single page ones in it. So first up we have a parrot, and then we have a tiger. And then we have this double page spread that I'm never going to do, so we're just going to not look at that. Then we have some kind of beetle, and these are really fun to do. They also turn out pretty nice, and they've gotten more advanced. This is one of their earlier ones, so it's not, the images aren't as advanced, but as I pull out another one that was a later one, the images are, uh, like, I mean, they, they look a lot better. Like, this one, I think, is a better looking image than the pretty simple cake, but I guess what I'm trying to say is they look more realistic. I guess not advanced, because they didn't get any more difficult. We have the sailboat, the rooster, or I guess perhaps it's just a regular chicken, not sure. I guess it's not big enough to be a rooster, right? We have the windmill. We have the horse. The horse is a pretty simple one, too. We have the wolf. This one was a lot of fun uh, to do. I wasn't exactly sure. I, I tried to white out a spot up here with paint because that was supposed to be left white like the little stars and I oops colored over it and the white out didn't quite work. Uh, this one was a fun one too because it had such a limited color palette I really wasn't sure what this was going to be. Next we've got some chairs on the beach. Then we've got another blank one. Oops. Skipped over some didn't I? Skipped over the frog on the cover. I remember buying this book specifically because of the frog picture on the cover. And right after the frog picture, how fitting, there's some lily pads. Then we had a castle. It reminds me of Princess Peach's castle from the Mario games. And then that is it at the back. They give you like an extra from some of their other styles of books. And then the key to all of the pictures. So I bought another one of those. I have book five. I don't have them in order. Um, I, I've there is a locally owned art store that is several hours away from me, and when I visit there, sometimes they have random uh, issues of this in, so that's why I don't have them in order. I've just been buying which ones they have physically at the store, and like I said, they don't... I don't know why they never stock them in order. They just seem to pick one to buy and buy that one and stock it. This one is also complete, so we've got a pirate. This guy is snowboarding. This one looks really, really good on camera. We've got an otter. See, now this is more, it's more detailed and more shading. It looks more realistic than something like the really simple cake from book two, right? That's, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. We've got the mountain, the sky parachuting. That's definitely not something I would do. And then we've got a double page, so we'll just get past it. We've got the gnome. I think that might be the only gnome page I've ever colored. We've got this pinwheel here. We've got this bobcat or lynx, whichever one you want to call it. I like these images because I think they have a lot of variety. There's all different types of uh, mysteries to uncover, I suppose. These lilies. We have a badger. This is another one that turned out really, really good. The badger looks awesome. We have a gumball machine. We have another blank one. We have what I assume is supposed to be Cleopatra, or just an Egyptian woman, perhaps, but this one also looks great. We've got a kingfisher. That is a little type of bird that likes to fish. That's what it uses its big long beak for. Very colorful. Hot chocolate and marshmallows. A game of darts. And that's the end of that one. And I've got another one somewhere that has never ever been colored in. Here it is. Book eight. Yeah, I haven't started this one. Um, but here is what one of these looks like uncolored. It just looks like this. They're 
squares and the numbers are very light so they kind of fade away once you color them in and I'm not sure what size square these are I don't know if it says um let's see it doesn't say yeah it doesn't say what size squares they are I don't know if they're like the three centimeter I have no idea they're they're a good size for me I don't think they're the smaller ones that you would do the X's on, and the color palette, if you're wondering, uh, is right here at the front. This shows you all of the colors that are in all of these, so it goes up to 36 colors, but none of the images ever use all of them. This first one here uses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 colors, but it could be any one of those, you know, so you could go back and look at that if you want to, or you can just read them, because I think the names are pretty... They're good enough. I mean, you know what red is, you know what red-orange is, and you're going to know what orange is. And then dark green and light green, and black and lime green. So I feel like they do such a good job at uh, putting names to the numbers, so you really don't have to go back to that and keep looking. Next up, I have one Sanch and Sanch Diva book. This is The Life Color by Number. I found this secondhand. And again, this is another book that I bought secondhand that there's nothing wrong with. I'm just assuming, perhaps, that the person who purchased it maybe just didn't like it or something. And the only page I've done is this simple little crab page. This is quite one of his simple books. Um, it could be for kids or adults. And I do like how this little crab turned out. That's the only one I've done. And if you would like to see a couple more pages, uh, here we go. Here's a jellyfish. This is, what is this, a starfish? Like a manta ray? And then a puffer fish, so and that's a good one if you like sea life. Okay. Next I have this nice big large print calm colored by a number that I have never colored in. I need to because it's very nice and large and uh, it's got nice thick paper, so it'd be great for markers. Let's see, the uh, the color code is right here, yeah, and it folds out. So let me move the book over. So when you're coloring, it folds out so you can see it, and there are 28 colors. They're pretty simple colors. It's like light green, apple green, mid green, dark green. So pale blue, mid blue, dark blue. That that happens a lot. It's like light color, mid color, dark color. And I feel like that's pretty um, pretty simple to follow in terms of color palettes. Some of them give you kind of some weird color names and stuff. And we'll look at a few more of the images here. You can tell what they are. I can tell that this is someone that's like hiking up a mountain. The mountain's here, the hiker's there. This one, this one's a little more ambiguous. This could maybe be the ocean. It sort of looks like waves. Yeah, this one's a good one. You can see the woman right here painting something on her easel. But this has a lot of pictures in it. I don't know if it says how many. It does not. I just know that it is quite a lot. This is a big, thick book. And here is a little glance in the front at what some of these images look like completed. I found this at Walmart, by the way. Uh, you can order it on Amazon. I just happened to find it at Walmart. I've got Posh, Posh, not Posh, Posh Creations Calm Color by Number by Steve Duffendack. This was also bought physically at Barnes & Noble. It's a smaller book. It's not quite like a pocket-sized book, but it's not like your regular size either there you can see and it's like a very simple color by number uh and it's very it's sort of like these modern style designs everything's very angular if that makes sense like not some daffodils there i couldn't tell you what that one is just by looking at it some of them are obvious some of them are not there is a very small color palette in here i don't think it ever shows you the whole color palette anywhere in this book and it's perforated by the way which is kind of cool yeah it doesn't ever show you the whole color palette just I think the color palette is maybe different for each image here's the very first one I did which was of course some frogs in a pond see this has eight colors and this has ten so I think the color palette may just vary by image and then I've done these gemstones here in the back and this one didn't actually have a back on it was just that simple so here is a little glance at the back of what some of these images look like completed. You can see they all use fairly simple color palettes, and like I said, they're, they're sort of like a modern style of art. They're very angular 
very square, you know, it didn't focus on being realistic, it focuses on being a modern interpretation. There is an artist that, that draws animals in this style that I cannot think of the name of, that's a rather famous artist, and I cannot think of their name. Anyway, found it at Barnes & Noble, can also buy it on Amazon. You should be able to buy all these books on Amazon. So next I have creative color by number, there's something in here. Oh, that is stuff for one of my other books, so I'm going to move that. I don't know why it's in there. Creative Color by Number by Felicity James, or compiled by Felicity James. You shouldn't do the images. I believe someone said these are stock images that have been turned into color by number. Uh, and I don't know if that's true or not. This is very similar to the one I bought at Walmart, and I think it actually has a few um, of the same images, but they are larger, and the line art is smaller, so. It's got decent paper in it. Not as thick as the one from Walmart, but decent. This is published by Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S, because I know that there were a bunch of these published and then they discontinued them and they kind of republished them as different ones with different images because a lot of people were upset by the new ones that they had duplicates, you know, if that makes sense. This is definitely a gate. These are definitely flamingos. This just looks like a pattern. This one's very thin, but it's most certainly a fridge. Birds puppy. I will show you the one page that I have done. This is a lot of fun to do. I had to borrow some markers from my Ohuhu marker set because this does have a large color palette. It flips out. It actually has the exact same color palette as the book from Walmart. The same 28 color palette. Uh, but for example, the intensity markers I have are 26 set. So like statistically I'd be missing two, right? I believe I was missing a little more than two. I think that it was the browns that really got me. I didn't have enough brown tones. And that's where I had to borrow them from. But this did turn out really nice. Um, the lines are kind of thin enough in this one that they sort of disappear when the image is completely colored. So it, it makes it look really nice. And I will show you again at the back what some of the images offered in this one are. A nice variety of, let me catch my little bird, scenes and animals, patterns. There's a couple of mandalas in here. Kind of has a little bit of everything. Okay, so... Next up, I have, I didn't include this with my Deborah Muller books because I wanted to put it here. Since it is a color by number, this is Spring Awakenings in Doodle. It also has the lovely little fold-out palette, but this one has 36 colors, so not the same, not the same palette. It starts out with a page you can color there. And these have very big, thick black lines, so these should be easy to see. That is a rabbit with a watering can, shovel, trellis in the garden. Here's a kitty in the garden. Here are some mushrooms and a little snail. And I have colored quite a few pages in here, I believe. Let's start from the back. So first up here, we got the puppy in the bucket. This was a nice one. And it, this one is definitely all just Sharpies. Um, there weren't any out of the box colors, I guess. That's why I should put that. That I couldn't find for at least that picture there. Now I've done the rooster crowing here, and this was a fun one too. I like uh, this used a lot of my yellows, and I don't particularly use a lot of yellows, so that was a good way to use them up. I know I've done a page with a turtle. Here it is. Here's my little turtle page. She's in the strawberry garden. This is another fun one to do. Though there are 36 colors in this one, I will say the names are sort of ambiguous enough that I can always like pull a sharpie or a big marker for it. It's not like, oh, you have to use cerulean. It's just like it dark blue. So I can find a dark blue or a turquoise, you know? It's 36, but no image uses all 36, and the names are sort of ambiguous enough that if you wanted to, you could substitute yellow, orange, and golden orange, you know? you could That could be the same marker if those two are not used in the same image, if that makes sense. So that's how I've always colored this book. What I use is number 17 on this page. It may not be number 17 to me on another page. So here we go. I also did this beehive. And I like this one because it had a red background. I thought that just made it, you know, kind of different. I didn't, I thought that was a little bit unique. I don't see the red background too often. I did this page here with either the swan or the goose and all of the babies. That was another fun one to do. And I think so far that's all. I'll show you the back. 
Here is a look at some of the finished pages. Again, they're all spring themed animals, flowers, birds, gardening, that type of thing. Next up we have my one and only Creative Haven color by number because I don't really, George Tufax's color by number are way too hard for me. But this one is by Diego Jordan Pieria. Pieria? Not too sure. Did that with water based markers in the front. Didn't like it. Didn't like using water based markers. So, the bad thing about this one is the color palette's over here on the left and it doesn't flip out. So, if you're coloring a page, you gotta like fold the book and kind of look at it or take a picture of it and have a picture of the color palette on your phone or you know, you do the page, you flip back to the front, you do another bot, you flip back. And that's sort of annoying. But uh, these look really good once they're finished. They have gray lines that they sort of disappear once colored. Here's an armadillo. That looks like a baboon. It's an eagle. Those are beavers. That looks like a badger. So let me find some of the pages that I've done. I've done several in here. Uh, when I was doing this book, when I first started it, I outlined all of the gray pages, or the gray lines, I mean, in black for some reason. And now it looks weird to me when I don't do that because it's the rest of the book has been done that way. So if I pick this back up and continue it, I'll probably keep doing that. Here are some, here, you can see what I mean. I've done it. I don't know why I did that. Uh, just a choice that I made to do, but I will continue doing it because it's going to look weird if I've done it on some of them and not all of them. But here are some antelope, probably. I actually think it tells me the name of this animal. Uh, a heart beast. There you go. It does tell you the name of the animal. And then I started this hyena page and my marker for that number completely ran out. So I'm going to need to go back to it. I can actually tell by looking at this that this is one of the big markers. So it would be easy to go back to and fix that part and uh, finish you know, finish doing the rest of the picture. Wouldn't be too difficult. I've got this gazelle here. Yeah, let me skip forward some more. These are really fun to do. Uh, it, it, again, it's kind of a simple color palette. You'll need more than the Sharpies, though, because there are a bunch of different brown tones that just can't be achieved with only the Sharpies. Here's a toad, and I love this page, of course. There is a snake that I've done somewhere. There it is. It's a ball python. Turned out really nice. Looks really good. And these are very simple. They're not, you know, the George Tufaxis ones, what I don't like about them is that they're really, really detailed. Just a little bit too much for me. This is very simple. These, these spaces are large white spaces for you to fill in. So it's not something you have to go into like your fine tip markers or anything. Now I've done a couple here towards the back. I just have to find them. Here's one. This is the tapir and it's baby. These are sort of a weird pig-like animal with an elephant type snout if you've never seen one. Uh, this is just called wildlife in general. It does feature forest animals, jungle animals, like lions, you know, savannah type animals. Just random assortment of wildlife. And here is the back to show you an example of some of the images and it, like I said it does name the animal so you know, we've got a tiger, a timber wolf, a water buck, and a wombat. Those are those are some examples of critters that you'll see. And it is 45 pages, so you guys know the quality of the paper in these is a lot nicer than anything in an Amazon published book. And then I've got my magazines from Mystery Colors. I only have four of them. And I've talked about it quite a bit in my uh, finished page flip throughs that I do each month. I'm not going to be buying any more of these unless they come out with one that's like Mystery Colors Frogs and the book's only frogs. Uh, the ones I have will be enough. They'll take me forever. These are quite detailed with small spaces. The color palette's not that big. It's just 20 colors for this pets one, for example. But it takes forever, especially because the shapes aren't uniform. It's not a big page full of squares. It's not a big page full of circles. I'm going to hold it up. You can see that they're weird shapes, right? They're, they're nonsensical shapes, and that takes a while to get in there and color those, even with your little fine tip markers. So that is why I don't do these too often. One of these will take me like four or five hours to complete. I'll have to put it down and come back to it too, because Sometimes looking at the lines kind of gives me a headache because of how weird they are. And this I could do a flip through if you wanted, but these are so 
ambiguous just looking at it. You know, it, I, I couldn't tell you what I thought this was. But I've done the tarantula in here. And they look, I mean, they look just absolutely stunning when they're finished and completed. They look like a picture. But they are just, gosh, are they a lot of work to do. And I don't like... I don't know, they take up a bunch of my time. Like I could do one of this, or I could do five chibi curl pages, you know? And then I did this Newt out of Pets. That was the only one out of Pets. I will show you the back, so. These, by the way, um, once the magazine is gone, it's gone, they don't reprint it, you'll have to buy it, you know, second hand. But the artist behind this did put out a mystery colors book on Amazon that is hardback and can, it has some pictures from several of the magazines that they've released, kind of grouped together, so. Here's a look at the back. You can see some of the pets they've got. They've got all kinds of pets. Dogs, cats, hamsters, snails, hermit crabs, reptiles, bugs. They got everything. The last issue that I purchased was the dinosaur issue because I like dinosaurs. I've loved dinosaurs ever since I was a little kid. And again, it's the same 20 color palette. Actually, this one has 19 colors. Um, it looks like they maybe don't have the pink on this one. And I've only done one in here one dinosaur let me go find it it is the stegosaurus which is my favorite dinosaur i think they are the coolest and it looks great to finish even this like it almost looks like a picture because the shading is so nice and everything and i will show you the dinosaurs in the back i think this one's fun because it's colorful you know they they went kind of crazy with the colors since technically we don't have you know a picture of a real dinosaur to compare it to i guess they were like well they could be you know they could be hot pink they could be purple so it's fun to color in that one because you do get to use some crazy colors. I also have the jungle animals. Can you tell that I like coloring the animals more than I like coloring people or anything? In As far as color by numbers go, I think that the animals are just more fun to color. So, we have a python here. I do sometimes look at the back before I buy the book. Uh, to make sure that there was like something in it that I wanted to color and if I'm looking at the back of it I'm like oh I gotta do that page first then I will go find it and obviously the python was the one I said I had to do first and I've done another one in here yeah I did this cute little baby hippo it's in the water that's why there's so much white around it if you're wondering what that is it is like sitting in the water looking up and these are little fun facts on each page that I guess is kind of supposed to be a hint about what the uh, animal is. But here is a look at the back of what they consider jungle animals. They have monkeys, bats, turtles, hippos, panthers, toucans, you know, all kinds of little critters. And then last but not least, we have baby animals. Yay! And this one was a favorite of a lot of people, but I actually don't know if I've colored in this one or not. I don't think that I have. Yeah, I don't... No, I lied. I have colored in it. Yeah, because I remember doing this one. This is a little tortoise. Isn't he adorable? And again, it looks that looks like a real picture that's, you know, that someone has taken. And these could be, like, actual photos that they have turned into color by numbers. That's probably what it is. But they get their numbers down so good that the shading even comes out, you know, realistic on these. And I believe that the hardback book has this picture on the front, or a picture of chicks. I think there may actually be two in the photo. But here's an example of what's in the back. So we have all kinds of baby animals. We have wild baby animals, like sloths and raccoons and kangaroos, and pets like pigs and ponies and puppies. So it's just got a little bit of everything for you. And that is my small collection of color by number books. Thank you guys so much for watching, and keep an eye out for the final video in the series.